All right. Hello again, everyone. Thanks for coming back. Uh, this will be the last uh, lecture type uh, thing before we jump into the, the final challenge, final project. So we're just gonna introduce one more um, antibody nuclear physics model because half of this uh, summer school is many body nuclear physics. Yesterday we talked about the Perry model. Uh, this is another type of Perry model. It's kind of a, a, a cousin and it's called the Lipkin model. So we'll start with the picture. Uh, beautiful artwork due to Jacob. Um, one quick thing, uh, this should just be epsilon uh, right here, just so you know, it should be epsilon. Um, so uh, I'm gonna draw two pictures to kind of see how, remind you what the Perry model looked like and then how that relates to the Lipkin model. So in the Perry model, they had energy levels like this and they had energies uh, zero, one, two, three, like that. And each of these, um, each energy level was either fully filled with a pair of fermions or not filled at all. And then our onsats moved these pairs between the different levels. And this was uh, like spin down and spin up. So to think about the Lipkin model, um, I want you to almost take this and rotate it 90 degrees so that it's now like, like this. All right, so we still have all the spin down states here and the spin up states here. And, uh, but now, why I rotate it is because uh, there's only two energy levels. So, and so you can have several, several fermions down here. And uh, so it's degenerate. All these have the exact same energy. And we call that, we're saying that energy is going to be minus epsilon over two. And then the second level is epsilon over two. And uh, it's kind of flipped from the Perry model where the spin you were didn't matter, but the energy level determined your energy. Here, uh, the energy level uh, or the, the spin is what determines the energy, and then it doesn't matter um, which, where you are, where you are left to right. So we can look at this more mathematically. You'll see it looks very similar to the Perry model, but let me zoom in a little bit. But uh, if you look carefully at the coefficients, um, you'll see that's different. So now notice that the coefficient for the one body part is no longer P like it was for the pairing model, i.e. the energy depending on what level you're on. Uh, but it's now sigma, meaning the spin. So that's why I kind of think flip it over. So if you're, if you're spin down, then you have energy minus epsilon over two. If you're spinning up, you have energy epsilon over two. So sigma is plus or minus, and there's the epsilon over two. So overall, the gap is epsilon. That's what energy is. And then the two body part, uh, we can see instead of in the Perry model, where you would take both spins from an energy level and move it to another energy level, you're now taking um, uh, the same spin on uh, different ind ind indices uh, horizontally to the opposite spin at the same two indices horizontally. So that's why we have this great picture here. You can think of uh, this bottom level initially being fully filled with fermions and the Hamiltonian, this second body term, uh, in pairs moves them up and down. So depending on what P and P prime is, it grabs two of these uh, fermions and lifts them up. Or, can, or if they're already up, it can lift them down. So you could have, you could start like this. 
it could say lift these two up here. Then maybe it lifts these two up here. Then maybe it brings these two down. Then maybe it lifts these two up. So you see how it can get all these different possibilities. But one symmetry you should notice uh, right away is that since we're always moving them in pairs, um, uh, you can say something about the difference between um, the number of uh, particles in the spin up level and the number of particles in the spin down level. Uh, for example, in this level, we started with six in spin down and zero in spin up. So n plus minus n minus would be negative six. After doing a bunch of things, we've gotten to four at the top and two in the bottom. So that means n plus minus n minus is, um, is four minus two, which is two. And you'll see that this n plus minus n minus is always even because you're bringing them in pairs. If you want to make it odd, you'd have to just move one of them, uh, which you can't do. So the similar to the pairing model, the number of particles is conserved, uh, but there's this additional symmetry that has to do with what's on the top and then what's on the bottom. And another interesting thing is that because uh, the levels are degenerate, meaning it doesn't matter where you are horizontally, which state you're in horizontally, i.e. what column you're in, uh, the pairing model or the Lipkin model actually sees uh, all states with the same difference in N as the same state, because it doesn't matter where they are. So this state is the same as one, two, three, four, one, two. See, so it doesn't matter where they are left and right, but only if they're on the top or the bottom. So that'll be uh, important to keep in mind later. Any any questions on kind of the concept of the of the Lipkin model? Yeah. Lower, lower, the summation will be similar to plus half to minus half. Yeah. Yeah. What is the summation? Or I, I actually, we have a half here, so it's just negative one and one. I see. Yeah. So the p is the index of the, of the size. Yeah, the p is, a, is basically the, um, yeah, which I don't know what to call it, which column you're in. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. these energy levels are degenerate. So the next one just, just moves over. <laughs> I see, I see. Yeah. What, what's the reason is two? Why it moves in two? Um, I don't know too well, much about that. Limited by that. So, so oh. what Ben is doing now is making a, a kind of model which mimics the pairing model, where you also made a selection. You could actually add a pair breaking terms to the pairing model. Mm -hmm. And you can do that also. You will see the Lipkin model in, with additional terms where you have just one particle which gets excited. So it's not like some spin conservation stuff or something. No, 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 no. This you, you can actually make this more and more complicated. Mm -hmm. It's just that pairing is a, a pretty typical phenomenon in, in nuclear physics and in general fermions. If you think about BCS theory or or um, superconductivity of electrons pair together, and you have this, a similar phenomenon uh, sometimes with with uh, with uh, neutrons and protons in the nuclei. So because of that, people have come up with these pairing models that strip away everything else and just look at the pairing. So, so the pairings, can, yeah. So you can potentially do this in parallel with a VCS or something? VCS it's actually, I mean, these three models are, it, these two and BCS are all kind of the same model. You just flip around with the, they're all like cousins of each other, yeah. So um, sometimes in the pairing model, there's an extra term that allows you to do something like this, take one that's up and one that's down and flip them. So one's the one that was up is down and the one that was down is up. And that will still conserve this, but we're just gonna set that term to zero just, just to make it simpler. So going on, consider each piece of the H. So we kind of went through that and talked about that. So um, we talked about yesterday, the Jordan Wigner transformation. So we're going to quick go through because again we have to map this from these. We're using uh, C instead of A now for the um, creation and annihilation operators, but they're they're the same thing. So just just to recall, um, this is the mapping. You go from uh, C to uh, 
a, a string of string of poly Z's before uh, the index, and then you put this the sigma minus or yesterday I called it Q minus, but it's 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 all the same notation. So you can see sigma minus is X minus I Y over two. So um, if you want, you can you can go through these on your own. But the first thing you have to do is, uh, as Jacob says here, you have to choose an ordering of J. You have to, um, you know, because right now we have two indices. We have sigma and we have P, but you just want to put this in a line. So you have to somehow count just, just straight. And one common one is this zigzag approach for you. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So if you walk through and you plug in the Jordan Wigner to these two body terms, you'll see that it maps to sigma plus times sigma minus. And so if you now throw this into a sum, you see that this terms becomes sigma plus sigma minus, sigma plus sigma minus. And why we study this model again is just like the pairing model, it can, it's what we call an exactly solvable model. Because again, we're going to map it to these angular momentum SU2 operators, J. Um, and we know all about the group they live in, SU2. And so that helps us um, exactly solve the model. So if we define uh, J plus as this sum here of sigma plus and sigma minuses, then this term can just be written as J plus squared. And we can write our entire original crazy Hamiltonian just like this. Very, uh, very nice and simple. And again, uh, J plus, J minus are the um, Jx plus I, Jy over two or Jx minus I, Jy over two. And J zero is, is Jz. And again, these are just the angular momentum operators that you learn. Yeah. So J plus and J minus is just uh, the doctrine that you find already on the wet form. So rotation then Jz J zero yeah, uh, is is like Jz. Yeah, I mean, J plus and J minus. Oh, what are they? Yeah, yeah. J J plus minus is just Jx plus minus I I Jy over two. Mm -hmm. Just like sigma plus sigma minus. And that's the rotation. So yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, they they. Um, they're the SU2 operators, so they, they have the, I'll say zero. Pretty exactly what it is. I think this is like plus minus, or this is something proportional to JZ, and this is something proportional to J plus minus. But these, these are just the angular momentum operators um, that you learn. Um, and 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 it, it you you could also write it as sigma plus minus, where it's x plus minus i y over two, and you could just write j z is is sigma z. So we're just switching between notations. Sometimes we use j, sometimes we use sigma. X y being the x gate and y gate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or poly x poly y. Okay. Yeah. So, so you, yeah, you, you can see the definitions of the slides where in terms of the signal matrices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, just like the pair model from yesterday, we produced it to uh, all S and two operators. And remember that this J plus and J minus are actually uh, each sums. So um, this is nice, but we're actually gonna do a trick where we can now cut down the number of qubits we need in two. Because right now what we're doing is, we're map, uh, if, I, if I have a Lipkin model like this, and let's say there's four sites, right now the way, and then, and then these are potential spots for it to go. Right now the way we're mapping it is we're using eight qubits, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this state would be like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, meaning the bottom four occupy the top four not. So that would mean uh, if you want to go from this state to this state, 
which is um, one zero zero one zero one one zero. That means uh, you have to interact with four different terms, right? You have to change these two to zero and change these two to one. That means it's a four qubit gate. But remember, we don't like any gates over two because we don't know how to efficiently decompose them. So instead, what we're going to do is we can do a mapping that instead of using eight qubits, only uses four. Can anybody think of one? Yeah, all means to the slower. Zero means to the So now this column is represented by one qubit. This column is represented by another. This is another. And this is another. And up means, or, or one means that the particles here and zero means there. So now this state would be zero, one, one, zero. Whereas the original state was zero, 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 zero. And to go between them, we only have to touch two qubits, two qubit gates. So this is a way of pairing the two particles together or two qubits together. It's a different mapping from the fermionic space to qubits. Um, so unlike in the Perry model from yesterday, where each energy level was a qubit and zero meant it was occupied or unoccupied, which is an exact extension of second quantization, we're doing something special here where each particle gets a qubit and zero means it's in the down state and one means it's in the top state. And no, we, we can only do this because there's only two states. If there were a third state, uh, it wouldn't work out. But this allows us to cut down our number of qubits and only have to deal with the two qubit gates. This is confused. Yep. So this is what uh, Jacob talks about here, further simplification of symmetry, if you want the details. And so when you do that, um, this is what our Hamiltonian finally looks like, very simplified. So you'll, you'll notice this is very similar to what the Perry model looked like except that this Z was an I minus Z. So it's just off by a constant factor. And there was a, uh, there was a P here, which meant that, uh, that, so there was a, there was a, the coefficient was inside the sum. The other thing is that um, this was a plus sign instead of a minus sign. And that's because X, X plus Y, Y, as you saw yesterday, flips between zero, one, and one, zero, and leaves the other two the same. Well, x, x minus y, y, you can work out, does the other. It flips between zero, zero, and one, one, and leaves the other two the same, which is exactly what we want, because that's what we're doing. We're going from two zeros to two ones, and, and back and forth. So that's a little intuition on uh, what it looks like in terms of spins. So, um, let me think if there's anything I wanted to say. Yeah, so, so that's the Lipkin model. And before I, I'm gonna jump over this and then come back to it. Or do I want to, let me see here. Yeah, I'll, I'll go through it, I'll go through it. So um, there's a lot of things we could do with this. We could find the, the ground state, but we could also do what Jacob talked about on the beginning of the, second day, or what Dean talked about at the end of the first day, which is dynamical simulation. And that is, we want to know how it evolves in time. So we want to turn this into a set of gates. And uh, Jacob kind of walks through how to do this, which is interesting. Uh, the first thing to notice is that, you know, this H has two parts, and we can call the one body term H0, that's the one with the Z, and H1, the one with the x, x minus y, y. So um, with, with a trotterization, we can say, uh, you know, e to the minus i h0 plus h1. h0 and h1 don't necessarily commute, but to the first order trotter, you can pretend like they do. And so Jacob says, how do we simulate this first one? And he says that should be easy because um, each H0 term is just a Z. So you have a bunch of terms like this. Well, this is already a quantum gate, right? What gate is this? RC. 
RZ. Yeah, that's an RZ rotation V. My angle T. Actually, 2T, just the way I've been defines it. So we didn't have to do anything for the first part. Second part is a little trickier. We want to figure out the gate for this e to the minus i x x minus y y. But again, like we said, uh, does he say it here? We know and hopefully have access to this paper. Oh, it's not the archive, so I can't read. But anyways, but you have access. Yeah, it's I, yeah, yeah. But the, the the point is that um, it's a two cubic gate, so you can just use the Kiskit function that converts it. And if you're interested in the math that proves why I can do that, you can you can check out that that article. Um, so he lets you fill that 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 code in here, and now he says, okay, now that we have the main ingredients. Uh, we just need to pick uh, an ordering because, again, that second term was xx minus yy, but it's summed over p and p prime. So you're going to have, if you have n um, qubits, you're going to have n choose two different terms. And what order do you put it, put them in? Um, and how does that affect the error um, that's created by the trotterization? So he says the problem has a, a fun reduction to the following. Uh, suppose there are n people in an organization and each person needs to meet every other person. So already you can see why it's n choose two. Um, but meeting, meetings are one-on-one, -on -one, but they occur in rounds. So if we're all sitting here and like I shook Morton's hand and then you guys shook hands and you guys shook hands, we can shake hands at the same time, right? But we all have to do it at the same, the same time. And that's analogous to what we were talking about yesterday with that ansatz that looked like this. Um, it turns out if you want to get all four choose two, which is six, the ansatz looks like this. So these guys shake hands and then their order swaps and then these people shake hands and their order swaps and these people shake hands. So let me just walk through one, one quick example of that because I think that's something important to know about. And, and, and I always joke with Jacob, I call it the do -si do algorithm and maybe we'll have a human demonstration uh, in a bit coming up. But so say this is qubit one, qubit two, qubit three, qubit four, and you need to apply a two qubit gate between all six combinations. Well, you can do each one of these blocks is going to apply that interaction and swap them. So after I do this, I'm now in the, these two qubits are swapped and these two qubits are swapped. Then you do these two, so they swap, and these stay the same. Then you do these two, these two swap, then you do this, swap and you end up in the, the opposite order so um this gets you you can verify each one of these is unique and they're all the the four choose two combinations um and you're done you've done it in a minimum depth because these two can be done at the same time and these two and these two, these two and what's kind of neat is you can track the progress of one of them so one just goes down and then ends there Two is an even number, so it goes up and then it hits the end. So it waits one and then it goes down. Three is odd, so it goes down. It can't go any further, so it waits and then it goes back up. Then four goes up and then stops. And you can see they all they all cross each other's paths. So I call it the do -si do because if you have four people standing in a line and you do this this dance, you each you're going to shake arms with each person. And you'll notice. I mean, we'll do this for real in a little bit. When, when you're the person, you get to the end, you have to like, you have to wait one round before you, before you go back. So that's why you wait there. Okay, so that's what he's talking about here. Um, how can everyone meet in the shortest number of rounds? So that's the answer. And this is called a swap network. But in uh, the case of the office, I can assume that I can connect everybody with, every, with anybody else at any given time. Here you can only connect maybe. Yeah, here we're assuming linear connectivity, which is very common in today's quantum yeah. computers. So you can only buy a two qubit gate between. For, for the people in the office, I think you can do it in minus one by just doing these things that you were saying. Oh, sorry. If it's, if, oh, if one and four can talk to each other? No, oh. everybody can talk to each other in the office. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can do it in one less. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, um, so it says, as an over, lower round, we require n minus one rounds. Since each person needs to meet n minus one other people, can this be achieved? Yes. 
I've already gone through how, how it works. So you could then put this in here and put these in one at a time, keeping track of which one they are. So like for this gate, you'd say, well, put it between gate two and three, but make sure it's the simulation between one and four. So, oh geez. So you would fill that out. So that's how you would um, simulate the time evolution. Uh, and then, then I'm going to skip phase estimation just for one second because I want to show you in something interesting about another application. So instead of simulating how this model evolves forward in time, we could forget time exists and try to just find the ground state energy. And we know that one way to do that is the DQE algorithm. So let's look real quick on how to do that. So if we just have two columns, so if our model is just this, then this is what the Hamiltonian looks like, Z1 plus Z2, and then we only have one of these mixing terms, X, X1, X2 minus Y1, Y2. Uh, I should have hidden this answer, but as I said earlier, XX minus YY, swaps you between zero, zero, one, one. So it'd be natural to think of an ansatz that uh, rotates between the zero, zero state and the one, one state. I'm not gonna show you the circuit that prepares that because uh, running this as VQE is one of the options you could, or one of the ideas you could do for your, for your challenge problem. So, so I'm not gonna give that away, um, but it's similar to what you did um, with creating, you already, you've already done this for zero, one, one, zero but they were the same and you had a phase. So, so it's kind of similar. And note, this looks like a bell state. Um, so I'm gonna just go through a couple other things about ansatzes related to this problem. And from now on, these are all just uh, possible suggestions of things that you, work, that you could work on. And this would be, for example, if you liked the part of the notebooks where someone gave you an expression for an ansatz and they said, figure out the circuit in terms of gates that creates it. So if that interests you, these might be uh, fun projects to work on. So, uh, to, so that was for two qubits. I wanna show you what the ansatz looks like for three or more qubits. So I'm gonna do four, I'm gonna do n equals four. Turns out uh, a good ansatz is actually gonna look like this. Some coefficient zero, 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 zero. Some coefficient one, 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 one and then some coefficient that's actually a superposition of So remember earlier when I said that the Lipkin model doesn't care where the particles are left and right, only what level they're on. That means all these states are treated as the same. It doesn't matter if you have particle here, two up and two down there, which would be this state, or you have this one, which is up, down, up, down, right? And there's four choose two, six possible different ways. It sees these as all the same. So it makes sense that the ansatz would give them all an equal weight. Um, so something interesting we're stumbling upon is that this state, the equal superposition of all states with a constant Hamming weight is called a Dickey state, D-I-C-K-E. And um, I, it was recently figured out how to prepare this in linear depth. And then some people came along and made it half that depth. And so it's still like an open question of how efficiently can you pre prepare these types of states. So, that's not something I'd recommend to do for the challenge because it's, it's, it's a tricky problem. But um, I want to segue into, into saying, because it's already known how to prepare these, I'm just gonna say, assume you already have that function. Uh, and the way it's prepared is, 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 is this. So what I'm saying is that actually the general ansatz is right here. It's a sum of these, of these Dickey states. D and K means, n qubits and k of them are one. So for example, here's d42. There's four qubits. You have two of them to be one. So you have four choose two possibilities. You divide by one or square root of six, so it's a normalized because there's uh, six possibilities. 
And because the Lipkin model always moves them two at a time, that's why we're summing dn2k, because you'll never get a state that only has an odd, an odd number of ones. So it turns out the general onslaughts would be a, a, a arbitrary sum of these Dickey states. Notice the all zero state and the all one state I had there are also Dickey states. That would be four, zero, and four, four. So because I, I told you it's known how to officially prepare the Dickey state, and the way it does it is it takes a state with um, n qubits, and you make the first k of them one, and then it's known how to turn that efficiently into d and k. So for example, one, one, zero, zero could be extended to this. And one, 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 zero, zero, zero could be extended to d six, three. So instead of preparing that, if you, since it's already known how to do this, you just need to prepare this. You need the state where the first two qubits are one, and then a state where the first four qubits are one, and then the first six are, are one, all the way until they're all one. So one of the challenge problems could be figure out the uh, uh, a set of gates that prepares this superposition. And again, it doesn't matter what the C's are. So you know, if you're using rotation gates, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what those angles are. That's a whole other thing to work out if you want them to be equally weighted, but we don't. So if you can, um, so if you could find a, a state that prepares, for example, one, one, zero, 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 plus one, 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 zero, zero, plus one, 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 and they'd actually be zero, 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 zero. So for example, if you could do this, that, that could be an, an interesting um, thing to work on for the challenge. And then if you could generalize it to uh, as large as possible, that's, that's even super arbitrary length of qubits, that's, that's even better. Another interesting thing to note is uh, someone came along and they said, well, wait a second, um, because it treats all of the states that have the same delta N is the same, why are we going through all the trouble of preparing these Dickey states, which seems hard to do, and just, just re-label uh, it and just call it you know, a specific state? So now, basically, you take that original state, for example, 0, 0, 0, 0, plus, and then this is the superposition of all these, plus 1, 1, 1, 1. You say, well, very easy encoding could just be there's three states, so let's have three qubits. Call this one one zero zero, call this one zero one zero, and call this one zero zero one. And so in general, you're just summing um, all the possibilities where the one can move around. Now note, this is actually D N one. And these are called W states. They're so widely used they have their own letter. They got the whole letter. No one else can use it. And so the question is, as another challenge problem, can you prepare these W states? So again, I write it here as two to the N, but the binary encoding. So that's just a bunch of zeros with a one in all the different places. So as I wrote on the board, can you prepare something like this? And again, I, I, I'm not asking you to make all the Cs equal. They can be whatever they want. And if you can do that, can you extend it to an arbitrary arbitrary length, not just, not just three. And I, uh, I give a hint, which can be used for this one and uh, for the previous one, that when you do this, the building blocks that you use are this little thing right here. Because, uh, and you can work it out, it doesn't do anything to zero. And it doesn't zero zero and doesn't do anything to one, and it rotates in the subspace of zero one one zero. So you could think the simplest case if you just wanted to prepare w two, which would be one zero plus zero one. Well, you just start in the one zero state, and then you'd apply this. So there, I already solved it for you for w two. You can work this out. For example, let's look what happens if q zero and q one are both zero. Well, they hit the first C naught, and nothing happens because the top one is zero. 
They hit the second C naught, nothing happens because the bottom one's zero. And then they hit the third C naught, and nothing happens because the top one's zero. Let's plug in one, one. So if we have Q zero is one and Q, Z Q one is one, it goes through and it hits the C naught. Well, the top one's one, so it flips the bottom. So now we're in the state one, zero. But now the bottom one's zero, so this doesn't get turned on. And then conveniently, the top one's one, so it flips the bottom one back to one. And so nothing happens. Okay, sorry, if I'm using something. Yeah. Why are you calling this second gate a C naught? This this second gate? Yep. Sorry, no, it's not a C naught. I, I said C naught. It's a controlled R Y gate. Okay. So it, it works just like the C naught, except that as in this is only applied if this is one. And it's a rotation. But the thing one. that applies is not the X, but the R Y gate. Oh. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'll walk through this one right here. So if the top qubit is zero and the second qubit is one. The first C naught does nothing, so you have zero one. But now, uh, because this bottom one is one, this is going to be applied. Yes. I do this. I'm going to reach up so high. <laughs> so you zero one, so this is applied. So now we get the R gate applied on zero. And what R the R Y gate does is gives you a superposition of zero and one with cosine and sine. So we would have this, except the second one would be um, one, and then the final C naught takes that one one into a one zero. So for both of these two previous challenge ideas I talked about, this is the only gate set that you need, but it's how do you place these cleverly to, uh, to create it. Uh, and then I tell you kind of how it scales. Um, I say, so to create these W states, um try to prepare for some small n or try to generalize it to to any n uh assuming linear connectivity which is they can only talk to their neighbors uh this can be achieved with a depth of n minus one two cubic gate columns and by two cubic gate columns i mean this so this would be depth depth one and but every additional like that's one column and then you do another one and that's a column, stuff like that. So you can actually do it in, in linear depth. Um, um, or, oh, and I didn't write, you can actually cut the depth in half if you allow circular connectivity, which means not only can these qubits talk to each other, but the last one can talk to the first one. Uh, let me write that in there. If you're clever yeah. or circular. Oh, and then I say, would circular connectivity help you at all? Well, okay, I just answer that. And then actually with all to all connectivity, meaning all these qubits can, can talk to each other, can have two qubit gates applied between them, you can actually do this in logarithmic depth. So if you can do any of these things, that'd be, or reproduce any of them, figure out the answer, that'd be a really cool thing you could work on. Um, Another thing you could look at is something called the GHZ state, which is all zeros plus all ones. So you've already seen and prepared this state on the first day, which we call a bell state. But now I'm saying just extend it. So it's three zeros, three ones, or four zeros, four ones. Uh, again, this can be done in linear depth for linear connectivity. And again, logarithmic depth for all to all connectivity. So Figuring out how to prepare either the GHC state or the W state um, or uh, this state that I talked about would all be great ideas for the challenge if uh, state preparation is something that you're interested in. The first two are going to use this type of gate. And I can't give away how you do this one. But just remember that to prepare this, you only needed a Hadamard and a CNOT. And I'll tell you that you only need Hadamards and CNOTs uh, to prepare this one. So in addition to that, here's some other ideas of things you could do. Uh, if you don't wanna, if you're more into the education and, and preparation side, you could make an instructional notebook kind of like this on a basic concept that you really enjoyed. Like you could walk people through different gates in Qiskit and tell them how it works and show them what it looks like in the block sphere and how the measurements work and how they apply together. Or you could talk about entanglement or decomposing gates. So you could make kind of an instructional notebook. 
You could extend any of the previous things that you've already done, the hands-on things, to a larger, more complicated system. So if it was two qubits, try it for three. If it was linear connectivity, try it for circular. You could apply, uh, we talked, Jacob taught you how to do the time evolution. So you could apply this to any of the models we've talked about. A simple model you make up, the pairing model, the Lipkin model. You could apply phase estimation to any of those. Um, I didn't put it in here, but you could also apply uh, VQE to any of those. You learned about noise today, so you could take any of the previous notebooks that you've done and also do a noisy simulation. And then, you know, bonus points if you can then apply the air mitigation techniques that you talked about earlier too, like uh, zero noise extrapolation. You could do something like we just talked about, how to figure out how to efficiently prepare certain onsets for different qubit connectivities, or anything else you can think of that has quantum computing and, and or many body nuclear physics. And if you have an idea and you're not sure if it would be able to be done in a certain amount of time, or you're wondering if it's, it's a, yeah, a feasible idea, you can talk to Morton or myself or, or any of the TAs. Um, and if you don't have an idea, you can also ask us for some as I went through, there's some here, but you can use any of the previous notebooks uh, as well for inspiration. So that's it. You made it to the end of the lectures and good luck. Questions, Paul, eh? So I'm going to try to one. Uh, is it last or the one that we're going to be able to